Hey ho, video time. Alan detected a video in my YouTube channel, which I did in German for our German um, AvoLets user group, where I explained some ways to uh, create a flyout effect. So essentially, some fixtures are moving from upstage to downstage with the demo on and only this travel goes with them on and um, yeah that's the basic idea and there are many ways to get there originally well this is the result as always and i will try to show you how to get there originally the question came from another user and he showed me a video like this yeah, you see some fixtures, they uh, start uh, pointing down and then they travel up with them on. By the way, they change the color in the very end yeah, and then they travel back home in, uh, with them off. This, that's the idea and I wanted to show how to do this in Titan. Here's another way with q -lists. A third way is with uh, queues. And of course I want to start from scratch. So disk, new show. And I uh, strongly recommend to try and find your way to do that. So because there is not the one perfect one, uh, something, uh, some uh, things are very easily done in, uh, with keyframe shapes. Other things are very easy with uh, Q stacks, as you like. And I recommend to try and find your way. So we have started a new show. We patch some fixtures. Patch fixtures for, as always, Roby. Let's take the. Robin 300E spot. Whatever it takes. One, two, three, four, five. These shall be our fixtures. If you ask why I put them spaced apart here, <laughs> it's very easy to explain. If you now open the capture window, you see them already centered because center position is, well, center position is this one. Yeah, it's exactly fiction number 25 uh, because the entire stage is um, 50 fixtures wide by default. Of course, you can move them around, but I'm a lazy guy. That's why I started to do it like, like this. Yeah. So these are our fixtures. We don't need the fixture windows anymore. Um, finally, I want to do it in playbacks. So let's open the playback window. Playbacks, here we go. Move it somewhere else. Like so. And we can put the group there so that we don't need the group window anymore. So move the group and put it there and the group window can go. Yeah, that's that looks nice. Okay, so where to start? Of course, everyone says we can do a flyout with um, keyframe shapes. How to do that? We select our group we go to shapes and effects and of course the keyframe shape always um, changes between several states and if we have a look at our video again one state is fixtures are pointing down with demo at zero and then they are um, pointing to the audience with demo at 100% and if you do this in Titan, it looks like this. 
we have our first step is dimmers at zero. Keyframe shapes, of course, we create one with dimmers at zero. This should be our first one. Add frame. Next one is at 100% add frame. Finish recording frames so that we can see it better. I change the size like so. And now we see the they are fading up and down and fading up and down. Okay, this is the first one. The next one is we add a layer. We click on the plus sign. Go to layers. And now we say, okay, we want to have tilt like so. This is our first frame at frame and tilt up. This is our next frame at frame. Finish recording frames. Okay. Looks already close, but what we do next is we change the curve of the dimmer frames. Just click there and go to snap. And the next one as well, and snap. Okay, looks very close, only that now the travel down is in the on and the travel up is in the off, and we change that uh, by selecting one of the dimmer frames and change the order with the arrows uh, this way. Okay, this looks already like a flyout effect. Of course, now you can change the spread if you want, like so. You can change the face, the direction. This is nice, like so. Um, or inside out. Inside out, and of course, then it's only three steps. Yeah. This is completely up to you. This is our version number one of a flyout effect. And we store it, record, and here, please, and clear, exit, and have a try. Yeah, this is something like a flyout effect. Okay, this was version number one. Version number two is a more simple approach. Because, of course, you can use the two things as two separate cues. Like one cue is, we select them, put the dimmer at zero, only to control. Right now I put it at 100% and then I have a look, locate, okay, they are there. And put the tilt in the programmer there. And now go to dimmer at zero. This is our first Q record here. This is our base Q. And the next one is with dimmer up and tilt up. Our second Q. Like so. Record. Yeah. Well, of course now we have to refine the whole thing because the, of course this is our first one, this is our second one and they travel up because uh, fixtures take their time. But of course we can um, change it there. So we go to edit times of the second queue and say okay you have a fade in time of what? 1.5 seconds. Okay, so it fades in in 1.5 seconds, but this doesn't make much sense because you, you will see um, first queue so that they are at home, second queue, uh, we are still in the times menu, uh, first queue, second queue, they fade both, the dimmer and the pan. So, and of course we want to switch on the dimmer and, 
have hit only the pan value. So that's why I go there again, edit times, here, yeah. change the fade in time to zero again, go to view queue, and uh, this defaults to uh, two times, so that's why always the delay time and the fade time is shown. And if I go here, highlight the uh, column, and enter the time there, 1.5, then I have a fade time only on the tilt channel, not on the dimmer. This is what I want. Next thing is I want to release it because right now it is there and I can switch it off and it stays there. Of course, I want to release it to the previous state and this is done in playback options. Playback options of that queue. Go to release. Release mask. Now we could set it to release mask source local and release everything which is easily done with a click on options. Also, we change the release time to zero. And now have a look again. Exit. Now they are at home. Now they fade in. We have to hold it down. And the only thing we need to change now is we have to change the key profile. So again, playback options of that queue. Handle, key profile. And the last key profile is the nightclub. And there is already the uh, timed flash in there. This is what we select. Exit. So now we only need to hold it down until they are traveled to the front. Let go, and that's it. You could even put some fade out there if you wanted to. So this is version number two. Version number three, have a look again at our video. Here we go. What I really love is that the uh, color fades, and honestly, this was done in a time-coded show. And uh, so, this way or another, it uh, involves cue lists. And of course, uh, if we use a cue list anyway, then it's easy to do the whole thing as cue list. So, we think about, we have how many cues? We have one cue at... Dimmer at zero and the uh, fixture is pointing down. Then the dimmer goes on, still down. Then the fixtures go up with a fade time. And finally, the dimmer fades out because, honestly, if you look close, the dimmer fades out and only then they travel back home. And this is what we do now. Okay, so fixtures again, select. All fixtures, locate, and now the dimmer is off zero. This is our first queue, and we do a queue list record, record, record. Now we have a create queue list here, and this is our first step. Click, this is our first queue. Next one is dimmer on. This is our second one. Next one is tilt up. This is our third queue. Could also click here, append queue. And the next one is demo off at zero. Append queue. Okay, let's have a look how it looks like. Now the cue is loaded. 
now a demise on. Now they're traveling up. Now demise off. Okay. Now let's work on the timing. This is easily done in the playback view, which goes with view and the playback. Here we go. So the first thing I usually do in such circumstances is uh, I set a legion so that I know which queue I'm working on. So the first one is how to call it. Uh, down and 0%. Next one is demo on, whatever you call it. Next one is travel up, travel up, and the fourth one is fade out. Right now it is, we always have to click and click and click and click and of course we want to automate it. And this is one of the purposes of this video to show you how the several link options work. So, um, the first one is the uh, fixtures are pointing down at 0%. Next one is um, dimmer in on, a uh, demo goes on, and usually this is what should wait for go. And the uh, third one is travel up, which should go automatically together with the demo on, but with a fade time of 1.5% uh, seconds. So we click in there, now here, and put the uh, fade time to 1.5. And the link offset link to um, with previous. The fourth queue again should start automatically as soon as the fixtures have reached their front point. So this goes to after previous. And it should fade in. 0.7 seconds or whatever. Okay, let's have a look. Click, click. Now they fade, fade out, and travel home. There is still one click too much I have to do. Try again. View there. In this um, particular situation, I can set the um, first queue to after previous again. This way it goes. As soon as the queue list is started, um, oh, let, no, let's try. Um, In this way, it works as soon as the Qlist has run. If I then release it, I still have to click twice. Only when the uh, Qlist has run through, only one click is enough. And we want to change this. Um, we change it by playback options of the Qlist. In the fader section, we have fire first queue, which we can enable, and we try. Still the same result. Have a look. View. Queue list.
we have to change the first queue as the last one. So we move it there, move this one there. And we would need to put the pen value also, or the pen and tilt value also inside the uh, demo, uh, demo thing. And now it, uh, it happens like only this one waits for go. And after that, everything happens automatically. And very finally, we also go to the uh, macro column here in the last queue and say, okay, um, release the queue list itself, please. And there is a macro called release me. Release me, here it is. And now have a look. Exit and close the window. I click once and it runs through exactly once and releases itself. Click, have a look there. And this is our version number three, almost. Because one last look to the original video. The fixtures travel in bright white, but when they fade out, they fade out with warm white. And this is what we want to implement here in our QLIS as well. So, in our last queue, is it the last one? Have a look. Have a look in our queue list. Fade out. Um, there we say they should not only fade to dimmer at zero, but also to um, color warm world. Have a look, or oh, we change this again to here, and we select our fixtures. Have a look which color options we have. Color, CTO, here we go. Okay, this is very warm word, or is okay. And we merge this into our fed out queue. Record. Yeah, much. And now, because color is an uh, LTP value, we need to make sure that our other queues have the uh, CTO 0%. Record. Yeah, and merge. Exit, clear. Have a look. Exactly what we see in our video. As soon as I click there, they, uh, the fixtures turn on, slowly travel to the front. As soon as they have reached the front, they fade out and fade out via warm world. And this is exactly what was finally used by the user because this queue list can be invoked into other queue lists in order to make it a time coded show. And this is what he what he used it. So I showed you several ways. Have a look again. Here is our um, keyframe shape. Then we have the version with two separate queues. And finally, here is our queue list, which works with just one click. Whichever version you prefer, it's up to you. I recommend to try all versions and find the one you prefer yourself.